Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, welcome to Anthea's Analogies. Good morning. Yes, it is Thursday again. I have missed you all. How has your weeks been? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Give me a message in the comments. Let me know that you're with me. Good morning, Ermin. Lovely to see you. Good morning to you all. Come on in. It's that time of the week where I take something, compare it to something else to better understand the word of God. And no analogy can explain God. So if the analogy may not work to its full potential, I have a hashtag. Don't resist. Relate to the message that I'm giving. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Give me a message. Let me know that you're with me. Good morning. Now, this one is named Learn the Lesson. This is number 86. Learn the Lesson. Good morning, Vera. Lovely to see you. Morning, morning, morning. Come on in. Learn the Lesson. So, this morning, I was listening to something um, a couple of days ago and and this one dropped in my spirit. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, I may have explained this before, if you guys remember, when I was growing up, our heating system was something called a paraffin heater that used to sit in the middle of the room and you'd light it, it was like a little... I don't know, almost like a a little chalice. I don't even know how to explain it. And you'd light it, it'd get hot, and the heat would just, you know, fill the room and warm up the room. Now, it would get very hot, so it was dangerous. You couldn't touch it. And as little children, little toddlers, my dad would tell us, don't touch it. Don't touch it. It's dangerous. You will burn yourself. Don't touch it. And we will get told this all the time. It's dangerous. Don't touch it. Now, my brother being inquisitive as he is, (laughs) as a little child, he was going, creeping slowly towards it. Slowly, slowly, you could see. He just wanted to touch it. He was going to touch it. And my dad could see him. My dad could see him, but he needed him to learn the lesson. And so he allowed him to touch it. And instantly, you know, he touched it and he let his hand go, whatever. He slightly got burnt. He felt, he felt the heat. And he never once went back to touch that paraffin heater. I've always remembered that. I don't know why. <laughs> But it was a lesson. It was a lesson through the little pain of getting your little fingers burnt because you didn't obey or you didn't listen. He then learnt the lesson and never touched it again. Never touched it again. And sometimes... It got me thinking about when we're going through things in life, painful things, challenging things, and we think to ourselves, well, why did I have to go through that? Why me? Why is it always happening to me? But then God placed in my spirit to say, well, I'm in control of all things. And you going through this pain or what have you, I, I, it's, it's within my power to prevent you from going through it. But there's something I need you to learn through going through this. The outcome through going through this is going to bring you closer to what I have for you and closer to learning 
what it is I'm trying to teach you and develop you in your walk and journey with me. Now, I just want you to comprehend that for a moment. Comprehend that for a moment. What lesson can we learn from what we go through, from the pain, from the challenge, from what we, what seems to us to be things that have been put upon us, afflictions that happen to us? What is the lesson to take from it? The lesson my brother took from it was not to touch the heater because it's hot. It's a lesson that he was told, but it wasn't until he had gone through the experience of what the consequence would be that he learnt the lesson. Sometimes we can see that things might not be a good idea when we're decision-making, when we're discerning. It may come in our head, you know, we have a feeling or we ha- something in our spirit is telling us it might not be good to go down this road or it might not be good to enter in this relationship. It might not be good to go for this job. It might not be good to continue in this friendship. It might not be good. It just might not be good. And and you, you sense it in your spirit, but maybe you don't adhere to it. You don't obey it. You want to see for yourself. And so you go through and then a lesson is learnt when you go through and realise, well, actually, maybe I should have followed what my mind was telling me or that feeling that I had or that unction that I kind of knew deep within me wouldn't be beneficial for me. And, and so when we're looking at why we have to go through things, it brought me to um, Luke chapter 17, verse 33. Luke chapter 17, verse 33, which says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. And if you let your life go, you will save it. Luke 17, verse 33, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. If you let your life go, you will save it. And you you might think to yourself, well, Amphil, what does that mean? You see, when we try to be in control, when we're making our own decisions, when we cling to our lives and think that we have this in the bag and we know what's happening and I know what's what's best for me, I know the ways in which to go and we cling to our life, the word is saying that we will lose it. However, if we let go If we let your life go, receive from the Lord guidance in the steps in which way to move, how to move forward, you will save it. Now, another thing God gave me was the story of Joseph. Joseph's experience. Now, this you can find in... I'm going to read Genesis 45, verses 4 to 8. 
Genesis 45, verses 4 to 8. Now remember, Joseph was taken by his brothers and literally thrown into a pit, left to die, sold him to slavery because Joseph had a gift from God in interpreting dreams. And he came telling them he had this dream and how they were going to bow down to him and this and that and the other. Jealousy took over. They took him. They sold him to slavery, got rid of him because he was the father's favorite. Joseph then found favor as a slave in Egypt with Pharaoh because he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream and helped him out. Pharaoh made him the commissioner. And so when the famine hit, Joseph was the one in charge of dishing out and cultivating the, the, the food and, you know, feeding families. And the, so the brothers returned, the brothers now seeking food for the family had to go to Joseph, didn't recognize him. And this is what Joseph said to them. He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that, have, that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Now, instantly we would have said it was, wow, the evil spirits within his brother that made them sell him into slavery. And what does it say here? Joseph could discern. It wasn't no evil spirit. It wasn't the enemy. It was God that has sent me here, not you. And when you actually think about that, it's like, well, you would never imagine that God would be the reason why Joseph had to go through what he went through in order to save and preserve the family. Now, during the time that Joseph was going through it, he would have been thinking all kinds of things. It's not fair. Why me? My brothers don't love me. The enemy's so bad. The enemy's so wicked. All the time, it was God that was, it was God that sent him. It was God that, that orchestrated all what happened to him because he knew the shape and molding that needed to take place in Joseph in order for him to fulfill the purpose that God had placed on his life. And his purpose was to preserve many survivors and to save his family. 
But he had to go through some pain in order to get to that point. And he had to learn the lesson through the pain that he was going through. Now, whilst Joseph was going through what is, you know, terrible, traumatic, being cast away from your family, sold into slavery, thinking that your whole, your brothers don't love you, your whole family don't love you, you're cast away into slavery. If in that whole time he sat just complaining about his situation, instead of cultivating the gift that God has given him, the gift that got him in that trouble in the first place, because it was the dream that he had first that he went telling his brothers and his father about that got him in that position. And so he could have just cast that away. Say, oh, what? This dreaming thing, this is not a gift. Look where this gift has got me. But it was that same gift that got him in favor with the Pharaoh, in which the Pharaoh could then put him in the place that he needed to be in order to fulfill his purpose, which was to save his family and preserve many survivors during that famine, which he didn't even know was coming. So when we say we put our trust in God because he knows the future, he knows what's coming. When we're going through our adversities or our afflictions, sometimes we think to ourselves, oh, wow, the enemy is doing a job on me. The enemy is really pressuring me and putting me in these, these positions. Why isn't God protecting me? Why isn't God saving me? Why isn't God preventing me from having to go through this? Why is it so difficult? I thought when you follow God, you know, things would be a bit simpler, you know, a bit more comfortable, convenient. All the time. It's not the enemy at all. It's God. It is God. We do not lean on our own understanding. That's what the word tells us. We're not to lean on our own understanding. Joseph didn't understand why this was happening to him. But he put his trust in God and lent on God's understanding of the situation. He honed in on the gifts that God had given him. He let the spirit lead him and he then was able to come through and be the person that God created him to be, shaping and molding him through the pressure. Now, this then got me thinking to how are diamonds formed? Diamonds, how are diamonds formed? Now, diamonds are formed, right? I looked it up. Diamond formation occurs when carbon deposits deep within the earth, approximately 90 to 125 miles below the surface, and are subject to high temperature and pressure. That's how diamonds are formed. The gem so beautiful, so valuable. It is formed when it is subject to high temperature and pressure. Sometimes, people, we have to go through high temperatures. We have to go through some pressures. 
we have to go through some challenges. And where we might be thinking, it's the enemy that is attacking me, doing to me. It is actually God shaping and molding. If you think about everything that you've been through, had you not been through it, you would not be the person that you are today. We haven't even, maybe we haven't even, we haven't even realized or come to fruition. We're still in the moments of pressure and high temperature that is actually shaping and molding the diamond that God has created us to be. During the process, God will never give us more than we can handle. He knows what our limits are. He knows what we can handle. All we have to do is be as Joseph instead of sitting and complaining about why I've had to go through this. We look at the lesson. What's the lesson to learn? What's the thing that God has gifted me with? What's the thing that I need to hone in on and grow. Let me stay close to the Lord because he will protect me. He will lead me through. He will deliver the lesson. Let me stay close to the Lord to discern and to learn what lesson is that God is trying to portray through what I'm going through. In Luke chapter 4, verse 10, Luke chapter 4, verse 10, it reads, let me just get it up here for you all. Luke chapter 4, verse 10, for the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect and guard you. Joseph was protected. Joseph was protected and guarded. Yes, he went through trials and tribulations. All the while learning. Everyone, every, all the while getting deeper and deeper and closer and closer to God to discern. To be able to discern. To be able to know that his dreams is God speaking to him. That his dreams is what was the key, the gift that God gave him to interpret dreams was the key to him reaching his purpose, to him being shaped and molded to the beautiful diamond that he is, to be able then, to be able then, and only through his relationship with God, was he able then to save the people that put him in that place in the first place. Because he knew and understood it wasn't them. It was actually God using them as a vessel to place him where he needed to be at that time. And so he no longer blamed them. That's the lesson to learn also. He no longer blamed them because God actually was the one who used them as a vessel to put him in slavery in order for him to learn his lesson. Now those are some might be difficult to comprehend, but it's a different perspective to take on the things, the challenges, and the things that you're going through in life. What is the lesson that the Father 
is trying to teach you. Like my brother, you may have to get your hand burnt a little bit before you actually take on the lesson to know the dangers, to know to stay clear, to know to be led, to know the ways in which to go, to have that discernment to know. Yep, this is the way to go. I may not understand because we're not leaning on our own understanding. It may not make sense. It may seem like everything and everyone is against me. But I put my trust in the Lord because I know he is the one in control. And actually, he is actually shaping and molding me in this process. I know and understand that I need to go through some high temperatures and some pressure in order to deliver the gem, in order to release the gem in me, the diamond in me, because God created me to be a diamond. And so he's shaping and molding me to be the best diamond that I can be. And that requires going through some high temperatures and some pressure. So my message this morning is to learn the lesson. Reflect, go back and look through the areas in your life And, and how you will know the areas is the areas that you're complaining about. That's how you would know the areas that are key. The areas where there's a lesson to be learned. Go back and reflect. Put your trust in God. Seek him. Ask questions. Ask questions, but when you ask the question, the key thing is to obey the answer. Obey the answer. The sooner you learn the lesson, because God can't move you on until the lesson's learned. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling stuck in one position and you find that the same thing keeps happening to you, different ways, but the same kind of thing keeps happening, ask yourself, what is the lesson that I'm missing here? Because until you get the lesson, God can't move you on to the next level, which is why Joseph was able to move on to the next level because he never sat and complained he actually dug deep and honed into his gift, which able, enabled him to move on with God, move on and develop and come through the season that he was in, in order to be the diamond that he became. So we need to go through, go back and ask ourselves, as I said, if you're feeling stuck, Tell yourself it's a lesson that hasn't been learnt. And so you need to seek God. Ask God, ask the Lord to show you, reveal to me, what am I missing here? What's the lesson, Lord? You're in the university of life, people. The university of life. And sometimes we don't listen to the lecturer. We don't listen to our teacher. We don't listen to our God and Savior. We think we know it all ourselves. We lean on our own understanding and think that we can take shortcuts and do the cheap notes and oh, I'll just blag it. I'll get through. There's no blagging in life. We have to learn the lessons. So go to your lecturer. Go to your fellow colleagues. When I was in university, group work always helped when you're working in groups because you can 
you know, together with fellow believers. You can journey that together and learn from each other's experiences because they're learning lessons the same way you're learning lessons. And as each of us are learning our own lesson, we learn from each other. All at the same time, going back to the source, going back to our teacher, trusting in his leading as to what it is he's teaching. The footprints in the sand poem always comes to me. Where there was one set of footprints in the sand, you wasn't alone. That is where I carried you. The first verse that I gave, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. And if you let your life go, you will save it. Lesson this morning is let go and let God. Let go and let God. Let go of the complaining. Let go of the, the yourself trying to understand what's going on. Let go and just allow God to lead and trust that he is shaping and molding you. Yes, there may be some high pressure and, and high temperatures, but he's shaping and molding you to get you to a destination to get you to be from the stone to the gem that he has created. Amen. If you're getting me this morning, let me say amen. Let me see your amen. Are you a unique diamond in the rough? Are you a diamond? Let me see your amens in the comments. Now, the song I'm going to play for us today is called, it's actually... A song I first heard today, this morning, God led me to it. I just want to read some of the words to you. Uh, thank you, Yvonne, for your amen. Thank you, Ermin. Diamonds right there. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Yvonne. Ermin. Vera. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you all for your amens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let me read some of the words here. In the song, it says, it makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. Another verse says, I know you've been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you. It's going to be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing. You keep holding on. People, we keep holding on. We keep on believing. We keep trusting in the Lord. And no, he has, will bring us through. So trust in him. It may not look like you want it to look. It may look as though the enemy is on your life. We give the enemy too much credit, people. When actually it is God shaping and molding us to be the diamond that we are. Engi, thank you for your amen. Hey, Kara says, shine bright like a diamond. That brings another song into my head, but we won't go there. Let's listen to God's Got a Blessing. Makes no difference. What you're going through You're gonna make it God's gonna see you through Hold your head up Put a smile on your face This is another test Here for last always So get ready Get ready For your blessing For your blessing Get ready Get ready For your miracle For your miracle
blessing with your name on it amen engi says god got a blessing with my name on it beautiful song amen beautiful song never heard it before god led me to it this morning people and 2 corinthians 9 verse 8 came up at the end and god will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others joseph was able and it was within his power to share with others, to really um, preserve for others. And it was in his remit. You know, he could have turned around and said, you know what? I'm not giving nothing to my family. But he did. Because God put him in that place to preserve his family. It may seem as though a harsh lesson was learned. For example, you may think, oh, my dad, how could my dad let let my brother go and touch the heat and get himself burned because he knows it would have burnt him. But he wanted him to learn the lesson. And me, uh, his sisters, us as his sisters, were we able to learn, have been able to learn that lesson through witnessing it also, which is why fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ is so important because you get to learn their lessons also 
without having to go through the experience of the pain. And so, understand, it was God that orchestrated for Joseph to be in the pit. And it's all about what you do in the pit whilst you're being shaped and molded that will determine whether you develop into the diamond that you were created to be. Amen. Amen. Great revelation and lesson this morning, people. Take it with you. Reflect on it and change your perspective. It's all about what you do in the wake, people. It's all about how you see things, how you relate. This should better able help you to maybe even forgive the people that have hurt you because understand it happened for a reason. It's for you to get a lesson and God was in control. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Remember, there's no Rev Smiler Spice. Fridays with Rev Smiler Spice tomorrow. We'll be back again next Thursday. So join me next Thursday. Go back and watch. This is number 86, people. If you've missed any, use this time to go back. This is number 86 of my analogies. Karen's is in her hundreds when it comes to her morning prayer. So please go back and watch ones that you haven't watched. Maybe catch up. Use this time. But to remember to remain focused on the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. But trust that the Lord is in control and you're going to get your blessing. Amen. Have a blessed day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.